Okay, this video is going over statistical questions. Um, so our lesson goal today that you'll fill out on your notes paper is I can explain the difference between numerical, meaning numbers, think of numbers, um, and categorical data. So think any answer um, that isn't a number, like we could answer, what's your favorite fruit? And it's an orange. That answer isn't a number, then that would be categorical data, okay? So I can explain the difference between numerical and categorical data and tell when data has variability. Variability means there's more than just one answer. So I could ask a question like, what time is it? And there's only one answer based on where you are, right? There's only one answer people would give that would be correct. I could ask another question like, how tall are you? and I ask it to multiple people, and if I ask it to multiple people, I'll get different answers. And when I get different answers, then that's vari by variability, okay? So that's what we're gonna be working on today for statistical questions. So important um, vocab, make sure you review that and we will get going. So statistical questions, what's in the data? Okay, so we have some data right here on our table. So 10 sixth grade students at a school were each asked five survey questions. Their answers to each question are shown here. So here's like a question that was asked and here are some answers that were given. Notice all of the data here is numerical, okay? Because all of them are answered with a number. Um, so I'm gonna go through each one. Question one, flip a coin 10 times, how many heads did you get? So I have to think which data set would match with that? So if I flipped a coin 10 times, maybe I got five heads and five tails, okay? Um, but it's saying, how many heads did you get? So the answer should be somewhere around five. You can't flip a coin 10 times and get more than 10 heads. So that means we know our answer should be between zero and 10, okay? But it can't be more than 10, and most often it's gonna be between five, right? Because it's like a 50-50 chance each time. So I'm gonna go through my data. Would it make sense if people flipped a coin 10 times and got zero heads? That would be very unlikely. And it's unlikely that multiple people got zero as well. Okay, so that one most likely isn't it. Data set B, that's all 12. So that one isn't gonna be it because you can't flip a coin 10 times and get more than um, 10. This one has six, five, seven, six, four, five, three, four, six, eight. So this one definitely could work, right? Because all of these numbers are around five and they're not more than 10 and they're not, um, less than zero, <laughs> okay. Um, data set D is all six. People are not all gonna get six heads. It would be so unlikely. Um, and then this one has a number that's bigger than 10, so that's not gonna work. So C will work for data sets for this question. Reason, all numbers are around five or less, um, they are less than 10 as well, less than 10. You can say your own reasoning, but that's why I picked data set um, C. So we did this one. Next one, how many books did you read in the last year? Okay, so we're looking at the data. Which one would be a good answer if they were asking sixth graders how many books they read in the last year? Some people may read zero books, but most often in sixth grade, people are gonna read more than zero books, right? So I'm gonna look here. I see this one, zero books, one book, but one book. That is a possibility, but it's probably not likely. It's very unlikely everyone read 12 books in a year. Very unlikely everyone read six. This one has three, seven, nine, 11, six, four, two. That's probably a little bit more likely, right? Because we have our, our data is kind of spread out more and some people read just a couple books because they were required to at school, and then some people read a lot of books because they're book nerds, which is great. So I'm gonna say probably data set E. Um, there is varied answers. Answers um, with not too small numbers. Okay, and you can write that in your own way. Next question, what grade are you in? So if you're asking 10 sixth graders, what grade are you in? 
everyone should answer the same answer unless they're just being joking or whatever. So everyone should answer six. So this one I know it has to be data set B, right? Um, reason, all the same answer, all the same, I want to say number or answer. So we've done data set D and E, okay? Next one, how many dogs and cats do you have? Um, so how many dogs and cats do we have? So we have data set A and B. So some people might have zero dogs and cats, some people may have one, some people have three, some people may have way more than that, but if you ask 10 people, this is a likely, some likely answers you might get, right? Because some people have none, some people have many. Um, of course, I'm sure some people have way more than just three, but this one would be one that would work, that could make sense. How many dogs and cats? My reason, um, some don't have pets, because maybe they're allergic. Some have a couple. Okay. Which leads us to the last one. The last, or this question is, how many inches are in one foot? There's only one answer for that. There are 12 inches in a foot. So that's why everyone answered 12 for this one. So data set B. Reason, we're gonna say there's one answer. And it's 12, okay? So um, question two says, how are questions three and questions five different from the other questions? So question three and question five. What grade are you in? We said D, all of the same number. Question five is how many inches are in one foot? One answer. Notice that both of these, they have the same number for the answer. All of these are 12, all of these are six. So how are they different from the other ones? Um, they have only one answer. Okay, so that those questions are not questions that would be a statistical question because a statistical question means we get different answers. If we ask a question and it's just a fact that yes, everyone's in sixth grade, um, then and there's no variability in the data, meaning there's not different answers to get, then it's not a statistical question. So they all have one answer for those questions. So that's the difference. Okay, activity two, numbers versus categories. Think about the responses to these survey questions. Do they produce numerical or categorical data? Um, write a C for categorical and an N for numerical. Okay, so numerical means we can answer it with a number. A categorical data is we can answer with anything other than a number, okay? So how many pets do you have? If you would answer with a number, like zero or five or whatever, two, then it's gonna be numerical. So I'm gonna put an N. How many years have you lived in the state? So I might say I lived in Utah for 10 years, okay? So 10 would be my answer. It's a number I could answer with, so it's numerical. What is your favorite band? So maybe your favorite band is like The Killers or Taylor Swift or whatever your favorite band is. That is not a number. So that is going to be categorical. What kind of music do you like best? So your answer might be country music, and maybe pop music, rap music. That is not an, a number to answer with, so it's categorical. How much does your backpack weigh? My backpack may weigh 10 pounds, 20 pounds, 15 pounds. So that's a number to answer with, so it's um, numerical. Where were you born? You may, were, may have been born in Park City or I was born in Oregon, so that's a categorical data because I answer it with not a number, with a category, okay? So simple enough. Activity three, variability. Okay. Okay, so going over statistical questions. Again, so a statistical question can be answered by collecting data that has variability, meaning more than just one answer. Here are some examples of statistical questions. How many minutes do sixth grade students spend on homework each week? Some people may spend like a little bit of time, some people spend a lot of time, but you'll get different answers. What is the typical bedtime of a seventh grade student? So some people may go to bed at eight or nine or 10 or 11 or 12 or whatever, so they'll get different answers. 
for that one, so that's why it's statistical. How many pets does an eighth grade student have? If you asked each one, they would all tell us different answers. Some of them will have zero, some will have one, two. Some will have the same, but not every single person is gonna have the same answer. Okay, variability. So variability um, means having different values. So there's not just one answer, okay? So this is showing variability. Some people answer 38 um, or 39 or 40. So this is, has even more variability because it's spread out more. So the answers are spread out more. That means there's more variability. If they're all like together, then there's less variability, okay? So variability, here we go. Read each question, think about the data you might collect to answer it, and whether you s expect to see variability in the data. So this is where you could try to do it on your own and then play the video to see if you got it right. Okay, so you could pause it right here. So complete each blank with yes or no. How many cups of water do my classmates drink each day? Is variability expected in the data? I would say yes, because people are gonna answer different answers. Some people may drink seven cups or two cups or 12 cups. Is the question statistical? Yes. If there's variability, then it is statistical. Where in town does our math teacher live? So if you're talking about, I'm asking all my sixth graders this question, there should be only one correct answer, right? Is variability expected in the data? No. So maybe people guess wrong, but if it was the actual answer, there's only one answer, right? Is the question statistical? No. How many minutes does it take students in my class to get ready for school in the morning? So some people may take a long time because they want to get their hair all pretty, they want to whatever, maybe they're slow pokes. It takes them a long time. Some people can get ready really quickly. So is variability expected in the data? I would say yes, because it takes people a different amount of time. Is the question statistical? Yes, because people will give me different answers. Okay. So that's variability. Here's some more. How many minutes of recess do sixth grade students have each day? So I know we don't have recess here, but at my old school, kids would have recess. And it was a set number of minutes each day. So if we're asking the specific sixth graders from the same school, there should be only one answer. Maybe it was 30 minutes or 45 minutes total in the day. So is variability expected in the data? No, because all the students all the sixth graders should have the same amount of recess. So is this question statistical? I would say no. Do all students in my class know what month it is? Okay, so is variability expected in the data? So if we ask sixth graders, what month is it? They should say the correct month, right? I mean, unless they're just silly gooses and they don't know. However, it isn't expected for people to get that wrong, correct? There's only one correct answer. So a variability expected in the data, no. So is it a statistical question? No. Okay. Okay, so make sure you fill out your rest of your notes if you haven't finished and then practice problems, mastery check and so on.